Okay. Hey, good morning. I, I hope that you all uh, h- hanged with us there. I guess we're having some serious network, network issues, but uh, I think we've got that figured out. And so uh, I, we're going to go on here. And, and if you uh, are scrolling Facebook, get back off of that. <laughs> Text your friend, call your mom, call your friends. We are here, we're ready to go. But we had a sweet, sweet time of worship here. Whitney McDermott and uh, Colton Matney brought some great music. It really was sweet for me. Uh, I came today thinking I might be the only person in the house, but I know that I said, uh, I, I know that I heard from the Lord. He said, listen, that place is anointed. I ordained it. It's a place of where I want a place of praise. So I knew it would be good in the house. And uh, as, as you probably know, Matthew is home with COVID. Um, can, I'm sure he's getting better. His family is doing fine right now. Several of uh, folks, and it's been a, a big movement of it uh, through Hollister uh, lately. So what do you do when you're sick or a family member sick? You check on them. You call. You stay, you, you really come together as family. That's what we're doing this morning. I'm going to talk about dads. I'm going to talk about werewolves. Uh, but listen, this is going to be a family opportunity here. I'm just glad you're here. I'm really glad you tuned in. And we actually uh, didn't know if anybody might accidentally show up. Uh, no one accidentally did except a couple of visitors here, here this morning. They're from out of town, uh, a man and his son, a pastor and his son, and so thank you. You guys know the drill. We have a visitor card. We want you to fill that out, and we'll put you on the mailing list till Jesus comes. You have an offering envelope, and since you're the only ones here, you've got some work to do there. That, just make that as big as you possibly can. But uh, anyway, all right, what are we going to do in this crazy season? We are going to make the best of it. We're going to make good use of this COVID season. We're going to be family we're still going to hang together. We're going to see it through together. As Matthew loves to, to say, we're going to keep pushing the gospel. We've seen like 15 people baptized since COVID started this year. Uh, only God can do that. And so uh, I also want to give a big shout out to Whitney and Colton. They came, they sang and played this morning like they were uh, like the Lord Jesus himself was sitting here. And you guys did really, really amazing. Thank you for that. And a big shout out to Jeremy Jenkins. He's our techno guru. He is uh, hurdling all these problems for us. He really has done a, a great job. He's my producer. He's my director. And I'm doing what he says. Are we still on, Jeremy? Okay, we're good, he said. We are going to continue. Matthew sent me yesterday his message. It's week number three on his series called Life with Monsters. Uh, I guess it goes along with the Halloween season. Of course it does. He talked about uh, 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 vampires, and we talked about zombies, and uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about werewolves. It's all about relationships, about how uh, relationships can be good, they can be bad. They can be good for you, bad for you. And uh, in this season, he's talking about relationships. And here's the premise, that life happens in such a way that uh, bad things can happen between people. That in relationships, things can go south. People can get hurt. And we've learned and we know that uh, hurt feelings just cause hurt hearts. And hurt people wind up hurting others. Sometimes People turn into a a monster and don't intend to, but they do. Maybe it's because of the monsters they've had. And relationships end, friends betray, expectations are not met. And out of hurt, people react. And sometimes we build up a shield around our heart and around our lives to prevent monsters. And sometimes we act out because our monster is just our way of, of dealing with the pain. But as I was thinking about werewolves, I got to thinking back about my first werewolf experience. It was on TV. I was just a little guy. And there was a movie that was created in 1941. And yes, I am that old. No, I'm not 1940. I was born in 1952. And if you, do, if you know modern math, that makes me 68. So, 
uh, I have a picture of this movie called The Wolfman. I don't know if anybody out there remembers The Wolfman. Is that not a pretty pathetic uh, example of high Hollywood technology? It was black and white. I saw it in the 50s when I was a little guy, probably around 1960. And that thing scared the P. Willow Jeebers out of me. Uh, do you remember the first time you saw a scary movie, a vampire? Are you thinking about it? You look back. A lot of us just little kids. And it had such an impact on me because that dude was a normal man, but he had gotten cursed and bitten and infected. And whenever the moon became full, he came out and he bit and chewed people. I, and for a long time, I, if I saw a full moon, man, it, had, it scared me. It, I knew there wasn't werewolves. I knew there was no such thing. My mom and dad told me there wasn't, but I was still scared. And, and you probably are too, because the effect of those things, uh, uh, of those characters, can really affect our life. Matthew was telling me about in his message how in 1985 he saw his first uh, werewolf movie, uh, Teen Wolf. How many remember Teen Wolf? Uh, I don't know where that came from. Maybe, I don't know what that is. Anyway, Teen Wolf was a 1985 movie starring Michael J. Fox, and it was a, kind of a cool movie. And uh, this young man could, uh, didn't know it, but he'd inherited the wolf gene, and he could uh, turn into a wolf, a uh, wolf boy. And uh, he was actually kind of a good one. And he could, but the thing was, it made him an incredible athlete. He played lights out basketball. You remember that? And Matthew said, I wanted to be a werewolf. He wanted to, that, that, that's Matthew. That's your pastor. Well, let's be clear. Uh, werewolves are not real. Zombies, uh, vampires, not real. In, look in the Bible. It's not in there. It's fictional. It's folklore. But for our purposes today, let's define a werewolf. Someone who looks like a normal person, but they can involuntarily or voluntarily become a monster. Uh, and the last two weeks, you can check on the website and see those two messages. Uh, they're really good. Um, the, they're not real, but the concept of a monster, of a werewolf, is in there. The concept of people becoming something different, uh, something bad. Uh, and and uh, today's title, the title of this message from Pastor Matthew, Matthew is Werewolves Bite. I've added in parentheses and infect. Werewolves Bite and infect. Matthew, I added that part. I, I, had, to, I had to add something here that fit me. But anyway, Matthew has uh, a scripture for us. Matthew 7, verse 15. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. That's somebody becoming a monster. It's a real person. It's somebody who comes and claims that they have a word of God or they have a truth when they don't. And they're like a wolf in sheep's clothing. They chew and devour, devour people. Jesus would say that, a false prophet is a werewolf. A false prophet is someone who gives advice and directions, claiming to have heard from God only to lure a person away from the truth. Sometimes that's intentional. A lot of times it's not intentional. Sometimes folks say things, do things, and they think it's the right thing, and it's not the right thing. It's not from God. It's from selfish desires or personal agenda, or it's just coming out of their hurt. Maybe some monster has hurt them, and they are hurting you or trying to. The Bible says that we can resist that. We can avoid that. And as I think about it right now, some of you are probably thinking like I do, like I am. There have been some monsters in my life, folks who have said things, done things, unmet expectations, some were just doing it because they didn't know better. Does it affect you? Yeah. Probably still does. It still does me. I've been bitten. I've been infected. The Bible gives me some advice. It says in James chapter 1, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil. 
If it's bad, if it's scary, it's not of God. Nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Just like a monster bite can kill, steal, and destroy. And I know you know where you've heard that before. Is that Satan's intent to kill your joy, steal your life, and destroy your spirituality? But God will never lead you away from his will. God will never lead you in that manner. God will never create a life for you where he's not needed. That comes directly from Pastor Matthew. It's so good. God will never create a life for you where he's not needed. So if you're wondering, am I being carried away? Am I being tempted? Maybe it looks good. Maybe it's a relationship that it just feels good. It looks good. It smells good. It's something you want. And it may be a monster because it's not of God. And sometimes, and, and we need to be able to discern, Lord, is this really from you or is it from a monster? How do we recognize the werewolves? Because they look just like us. They talk just like us sometimes. But sometimes it looks good, feels good, sounds good. There's a couple of things here in the outline that we can keep in mind. Number one, you can spot a werewolf by their fruit, by what they do. The Bible says in Matthew 7, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but are inwardly are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit you will recognize them. Their actions can reveal that the things they do and the things they say are just not of God. You best watch out because that hurt in their heart and in their mind is going to wind up infecting your heart and your mind. Jesus said that the fruit of your life needs to be as in the fruit of the Spirit. That the fruit of somebody's life needs to be obvious that this is from God. As it says in Galatians 5, 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. That's how you know if it's of God. That's how we know if you are from God or if you are speaking from God. Marcia was having fun with me yesterday. I was uh, kind of preparing for this message, and she, and she said, what are you going to preach on? I said, I'm going to preach on dads. Dads are werewolves, maybe sometimes. <laughs> I was making it up right there at that point. And she goes, haven't you talked about dads before? And I said, well, I have. Are you, you think I shouldn't? She goes, well, I, I, I mean, when did you last talk about dads? And I looked at her and I said, now, is that of God? <laughs> are, you, are you speaking for the Lord right there? And we're having fun. We kind of we laughed in at each other. We knew that, okay, the point is here, Lord, what do you want? What do you want for us today? All right, number two, the next second thing you need to do to watch out for werewolves and monsters is know the truth. If you have the truth in you, you know when something's false. If you're reading your Bible on a regular basis and committing those things to memory and hiding them in your heart, if you know what God says about things so that you can always ask, well, what would Jesus say about that? What would Jesus do about that? then you're not likely to succumb to the opinions of others or the agenda of others or their personal interests or their hurts or the monsters of their past. Maybe they're just acting out the hurt that they have, and you need to know the truth. And let me give you an example of how to know the truth. I've got a picture of two girls that come to this church. They are identical twins. Did we get that? Look at them. 
That's Jackie and Maddie Payette. They're identical twin girls. They're juniors at Hollister High School. Can you tell any difference? I mean, their hair's combed right differently about that. Put that different, put them in the same sweatshirt. And I'll tell you, when those two girls are here, they are hard to tell apart. But I knew I was going to be seeing them on a regular basis, and I thought, i got to get this figured out, because I'd see one, I didn't know what, who they were. So I, I, just, I, I knew that I, I needed to spot the differences. And so I picked on the girl on the left. Uh, no, on the right, Maddie. Can't see from here. <laughs> yeah, I picked on Maddie. I started looking at Maddie. I started studying Maddie's face. I said, I'm going to really figure out who Maddie is and what she looks like. And guess what? When Jackie would walk up, I knew that Jackie was the phony. I knew that Jackie was not Maddie because I knew the real Maddie. That's how you know the truth. That's how you get through life among, around the monsters is you know what God says, what the real truth is, and that way when you hear something that's not right, that's not good for you in your life, in your spiritual life, and your family, and dads, this is your main job, to know the truth of God so that you can know what God is saying about you and your family and your household. You are the one that God expects to know the truth. He doesn't expect your wife to know and be able to lead and direct your family. It's just, I mean, an example is Eve was tempted, and the devil changed one word in the whole story, and, and Eve was not ready to receive that. And Adam was standing there the whole time, or he was around. The Bible says she gave the fruit to her husband who was there. I believe in that he was there. Why didn't Adam? Adam should have stepped up and said, shut up and put that down, young lady. I know that what God said. And what the monster's saying is not your debt. That, that's your job, okay? All right, I jumped sideways there. I looked up the word bite in the dictionary. I, not the dictionary, the Bible. <laughs> Can I get a little hilarious laughter from the crowd? Um, I looked it up because I thought, okay, what, what does the Bible say about biting? Because uh, I couldn't remember a scripture. And I looked it up, and the word bite appears eight times, and seven times it's revolving a snake, so you know that's bad. All eight are bad. There's one that even says in Galatians 5, 14, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. Biting is generally not good. It can bring about something bad. And right there, the thing that did it was words. Words. They used it. They were devouring each other with words and selfishness and personal agendas. Somebody in that group there in Galatians 5 And that church hopefully stood up and said, now I know what the truth here is of this matter. Let's call it what it is. That's not of God. Let's follow what God says. But I got to thinking, is there any time when a bite can be good? And I thought of something going on here at NBF right now that is good. And that is this. We, about a month ago, some of our ladies just had it on their mind, one woman in particular, who happened to be leading a, uh, a ladies just get together and encouraging each other little fellowship thing around a meal once a month. She was meeting with a few ladies once a month, and it was growing, and the girls were, were really uh, learning some good things. And this, the personal relationships with some friends was so important and so encouraging. You know, ladies need ladies. Women need women. All right? And... And this was really working out good. And so about a month ago, she said, I think I'm just going to open this up. And maybe there are other ladies here that would like to do something like this. Put it in a bulletin, a very little bit of publicity. But in, a, in one week, did that, did that ever become a big deal? Over 69 ladies signed up for that within one or two weeks. And now they're meeting they're going to be dividing up and going to different groups with different leaders. How did that happen? What, what caused that? I'm going to show you a picture of how that happened. 
There it is. Isn't she cute? Isn't she a hottie? That's my wife, Marcia. It was her idea. She started doing it about a year ago with these ladies, and then it took off. And then she said, well, how about some other girls? And the next thing you know, some of these younger gals uh, are all excited about it. Well, let, me, let me tell you something. This kind of gig is not Marcia's real deal. Uh, she's not a big per, per, crowd person. She's not a real organizer, like to organize groups and, and get this going. She's not a teacher, not a preacher. None of those are her spiritual gift. It's not even encouragement or exhortation. That girl's gift is mercy, which is a one-on-one spiritual gift that's helping people one at a time. And, and, and the, the essence of this, the supernatural aspect of her gift is people just want to talk to her. That's her gifting. But she had an idea because this idea had been really working for her. She infected some people. She bit them. And they got infected. And all these other young ladies are going on now with this thing. It's becoming a big deal. I think I've got another picture of her. What's the next picture? There she is. She's, she's bitten and infected those two lovely daughters of mine. And those girls have been doing the same thing together for a long time. Not because she's a group starter, but, but she bit them and infected them with encouragement. I've got another picture, I think. No, I think that's in. Is that all of it? Oh, my gosh, Marcia, you put that in there. I know you're watching, you booger. You did that. I'm sure you did that. Are there, there's certainly not no more pictures, right? Is there anything else? Because uh, I'm not sure what she did. Oh, that's bad. That's a monster. Do not take him home if you happen to see him. Okay. All right. Let, Marcia. And these ladies have been bitten and infected. You know with what? With what they've been infected with? An antibody. It's an antibody. We've been hearing about antibodies and infections. How about a season for some good antibodies? How about a season where we are biting and infecting people with the right kind of words and the right kind of being the, uh, 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 the right kind of encourager that people's lives are being infected? That's what we need in this season. I'm getting excited because we can make a good season out of this. There's another picture. As powerful as it is when a woman and her her daughters and her friends get bitten and infected, how about this picture? Who is that? I don't have any idea. I just swiped that picture off the internet. I just went for a family photo have no idea who they are, but aren't they cute and aren't they lovely? Isn't that something? Let me ask you this. Who's got the biggest bite in that picture? In that family, who's got the biggest bite? It has to be dad. Oh, yeah, his mouth is bigger, probably stronger. I would tell to you, I would say to you that the influence of a dad is more infectious than the bite of a mom. How can I say that? Because God, I believe, made it that way. I believe God that designed women and men, dads and wives, so that the dad is the leader. The dad is the lead infector. The, what get, the dad can do in the life of children and in the life of his wife can, and can be and should be more infectious than any other bite, than anything or anyone else in their life. Dads have a greater ability. Now, oh, listen, I'm not downplaying moms. Listen, James Dobson would say the first couple, three, four years, five years of a child's life, the mother relationship is probably more important because it's nurturing, it's developing But he says eventually, particularly boys, have to be kind of handed off to their dad because boys can only learn to become a man from other men. 
Boys have to have the bite of a man to develop into that kind of person that God has intended them to be. Some of us have had dads who our bite was not too good, but we're still infected. My, uh, uh, my dad bit me uh, years ago. He gave me, he gave me some, some bugs. He taught me how to play baseball. He loved baseball. Man, I, I, I just love playing baseball. And today is still a big deal. I was practicing my throwing arm yesterday with some rocks. He actually took me to a football uh, practice. He never played football in his life. But, oh, man, that became the love of my life. I, I, I mean, football, baseball, I'm still infected. But listen, my dad grew up in a home that was very hurtful. And my dad had some hurts, caused some issues. My dad did not know Jesus, never did know God, never wanted to. He died 30 years ago. So my dad had some issues, but guess what? I got infected with some of those same issues. Still have them. Still have them. I want to share one more scripture, and then I'll probably finish this is really, it just occurred to me yesterday, Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. It says, make a tree good and its fruit will be good, or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad, for a tree is recognized by its fruit. We, we talked about how we're recognized by our fruit. But I want you to see a word that's jumping out of the, off the page at me, and even now, it's that first word, make. How do you make a tree? Do we make a tree? Can, can you go make a tree? I can't make a tree. Oh, I can find a seed and put it in the ground, but I don't make the tree. But the scripture says in Matthew chapter 12, make a tree good. I, I looked it up in several translations. I can't find where that is like a mistake. I think it's there for a reason. I think it's there for dads and moms. We have the ability to make a tree. It's a son or a daughter. We have the ability to infect life. How do we do that, dads? Well, one way, of course, is words. We use words to make a tree good or bad, a child good or bad, a life good or bad, an experience good or bad. Words are powerful. Proverbs 18 says... Words have the power of life and death. But I'll tell you, words are not enough. They're important, but they're not enough. That ain't going to get the job done because you can tell your wife you love her. You can tell your kids you love them. You got to show it. You got to have some actions, right? Words are not enough. They, they begin to become convinced if the actions... For, but I want to tell you, some actions are not enough. Biblically, words... And your actions are not enough. Watch this, and then we'll close. First John chapter 4, verse 16. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Underline that. God is love. Underline it in your mind and please keep it in mind. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Notice it didn't say God is loving or God acts out of love, or he, he's compassionate, and what he does comes out of this loving kindness. Those things are all true. Why does it say God is love? Have you ever wondered about that? What does that really mean? I've tried to put this together in my mind, but I don't have it. I haven't really grabbed it yet because God is not just these things. He is it. I also kind of struggle with that name of God. When Moses said, I need to know your name. What's your name? Did God give him a name? He didn't say, oh, I'm God or I'm Yahweh. He says, what? I am who I am, that I am. He was talking about who he is in down deep, who the real person is, his nature. He is the great I am. He is love. Dads, this is what we're shooting for. 
Words are good, but words are not enough. Actions are good, but actions are not enough. If we're going to really bite and infect our kids with the antibodies that do not steal, kill, and destroy, but bring abundant life, help God bring abundant life into them. We got to strive to be love. That's who we are. I suppose that means that that is our character, our nature. That down deep inside, the real DNA that we are, we're, we're something. Perhaps we should be striving that when God, when people think of us, when our children, our wife think of us, think he's, he's love. That's what he is. After all, is this possible? Even possible? Listen, we're made in the image of God. That verse is not talking about physical, any other thing. It's talking about the nature of God, who he is inside. He made us in that image. We're more like God than we realize. Dads, you are more like God in your home than you know. So, What should you do with that? What do you choose to do with that? I know some today would even say, I need God in my life. I, I, I need Him to bite me and infect me and change me. I need God. Some would even say, this is the day that I really want to ch oh, change my life. I want to go a different direction. I would tell you that you were made for knowing God. You were made to know Him. He designed you for that. He is the infection that you need. The Bible says that the day that you call upon the Lord, you shall be saved. Maybe that's what you need today. Be saved. Is that it? You get that first bite and taste the goodness of God? I'm going to help you with that. If that's you, if that's your desire, we're going to pray, and I'm going to invite you to invite God into your life. You have to ask him. He's not going to barge in. It's, it's an act of your will. You have to decide that this is something I want for my life, and I need to call upon the name of the Lord so that I can be saved. I want to pray in just a second, and you can pray with me because it's just talking to God, and it's you talking to God. Say, God, I need you today. And some would say, you know, I just, I need to let God bring the antibodies and infect my life and change the monster that shows up in me. I need to do that. We can pray for that also. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, that this is the day when someone can call upon the Lord. As this is the day that this can happen. Probably someone is. And I invite them right now to say, God, I need you. you. Say it in your heart, God, I need you. I need you today. I'm calling upon the name of the Lord. I'm calling upon the Lord to come into my life. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Forgive me. I want to be a different person. There's some monsters I've been infected with, and I'm, I want to move on. I need some Jesus. So please, save me. Teach me now what it means to be a Christian. Teach me what it means to be a man or a woman that can influence and lead others. Lord, for some of us, we, we know you, and we've just allowed the monsters of the past to hurt us and hold us down. And it's nothing but the devil coming to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to infect us with abundant life. And today I'm going to just begin to raise my hand and claim it again. I'm claiming it over my life so that I can claim it over my wife or my children. Give me the power to be somebody new. And Lord, thank you for this day. It's a good day. It's, it's different, but that's fine. We know you're 
keeping our pastor safe. You're, you're feeding into him today, keeping his family safe. We pray for a lot of our folks, Lord, that some probably have COVID. I don't know. Some have, I know, colds and flus and other things. Some have serious issues. Lord, I pray that today is a day of blessing for them because by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Lord, that brings physical healing and mental healing and emotional healing and spiritual healing. That's what he, the Bible means by his stripes are we healed. Thank you for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Uh, maybe we'll all be right back in here again next week. Uh, I want to thank Pastor, you and your son for uh, loading this up for us because you know, you're on your own today. Love you all. And Whitney and and uh, Colton, again, phenomenal job. Jeremy, above and beyond. Love you for that. God bless you all. Love you.